And as Andrea will tell you, I like things to be interactive. So Bronwyn told you to mute yourself. I'm gonna ask you to unmute yourself. And when, when I ask questions and if you have answers, please shout them out, raise a hand, um, turn your camera on if you like, if you don't like, however you wanna do it. I really would love this to be an interactive conversation. Because again, property is, is pretty common sense stuff ultimately. And I know you guys have answers to all of these things that I'm going to bring up today, okay? So I would, I'm gonna start off and ask, what are the different categories of real estate that are out there? Who can give me an answer? First answer. Where have you spent all day today? Anybody? Shout out guys. School. School. There we go. Education. That's one sector. What else? Where do we go on holidays? Anybody? Resorts. Resorts. Hotels. Resorts. Where do we go to work? What's the shop? Uh, offices. Offices. Where do we shop? I'm going to give you the answer. So we call it retail, right? But that would consider that would be considered shopping and food. So like restaurants. Okay, that's another sector. What else? Anything else? Housing. Housing. Absolutely. Residential, we would call it residential. And actually I'm gonna tell you in residential, there's lots of subcategories, right? Cause there's private um, for sale, there's private for rent, right? So either you're building to sell something or you're building it to rent it out. There's uh, affordable housing where you are in partnership with a local council. There is senior housing for older people, continues on and on. Residential is a wide sector. Uh, keep going. Can we think of anything else? I'll tell you what, I'm gonna give you some hints. So there's a whole category that's kind of called leisure, okay? You could put hotels and resorts in there, but there are a lot of um, you know, things that we do for fun that actually require land or buildings. So who can think of something like that? What does Tiger Woods do? Do you guys know who Tiger Woods is? Golf. Golf, golf courses. Anything else? Swimming what? pools. Sure, yeah, sports facilities, I like that. What's Las Vegas known for? Casinos. Uh-huh, casinos. We call that gaming, the gaming industry, okay? Um, so again, special, these are specialist sectors. There are some people who make a whole career just out of building casinos and or building and developing golf courses, right? So these are specialist sectors. Okay, let's see how many of the ones we got on this page. So somebody very kindly put together this page for me. I think we, ooh, we missed out an important one. How could we forget about, uh, okay, so we got residential offices, hotels. We didn't think about healthcare. We should have thought about healthcare. Hospitals, very important. Um, we, we, municipal buildings, okay, we can talk about municipal buildings, meaning government buildings, but to me, they're just office buildings. Um, logistics are actually very important. Logistics, which basically like warehouses, okay? And actually right now, they're really, really hot. Can anybody tell me why logistics is really hot right now? Who uses warehouses? By the way, guys, you know, there's a raise hand function if you guys ever want to raise a hand on Zoom. So do you want to take a stab? Can I can I take an answer, Leslie? For the Amazon and the people like that? Yep. 
Yeah. So anybody who's delivering goods to us right now, right? Oh, um, um, sorry, Leslie. Simon has typed in because online shopping oh. is boosted. Oh, I see. Is that in the, see, I can't see the chat right now. Got it. Perfect. That's great. That's exactly right. Yeah, Andrea, if you see someone in the chat room, please do let me know because I can't see that. Well, yeah, I'm happy to call them out if, if they want to type in. See if I could. Yeah. Great. Call. Yeah, please do because I can't really see it while I'm sharing screen with my um, presentation. So yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, and we're going to get to that later. You know, um, who were the winners of COVID? People who are delivering goods are winners of COVID. You know, everybody thinks of COVID as being this big downer and everybody's down and out and, you know, everybody's out of business and out of work. Actually, the people who've been delivering goods to people's homes like Amazon have been huge winners and they use logistics buildings, warehouses more than anyone. All right. Because that's where they store their goods. That's where they pick them up before they deliver them to our houses. All right. So that's a very hot sector at the moment of real estate. So a subsector of real estate. Let's do some more um, interactive discussion. So I would love to hear from you guys what you think some property related careers are. So again, another thing I love about property is that there are so many different dimensions to property, right? There's a creative side, there's a technical side, there's a financial side. It actually requires a lot of different types of people to build a building. Okay, so I would like you guys to think about what you think it takes from beginning to end in developing a building. Who wants to throw out some ideas of what types of jobs might be involved? And it could be the most obvious of jobs, by the way, right? So I'm gonna start with the most obvious, right? Let's talk about builders. Builders, construction guys, right? Those guys, we need them. Without them, if they're not laying the bricks, they're not putting the steel into the ground, there aren't gonna be any buildings. They're very important to the building, to the property industry. And in, in fact, they're one of the largest employers, I would say in most economies, because without them, there is no property around us. What else? Architects. Architects. They are um, the creative We've stuff. also had, sorry, Leslie, to interrupt. We've also had property lawyers. Yes. Up. Oh my gosh. No, that's, that's very good. Yeah. Property lawyers. They are evil and yet very necessary. I'm just joking. I love my property lawyers. It's very important to have good property lawyers because they're the ones who interpret um, what we can do with our building, right? And also they lay out the, the relationships for us in a technical manner in documentation between ourselves, our partners, our banks our tenants, right? So I'm gonna kind of go out here and, and list a whole bunch of different types of property lawyers. So I'll have uh, planning lawyers, construction lawyers, banking lawyers, uh, what else? You have, oh, tax, the property tax, corporate lawyers. We need all sorts of lawyers. Being a lawyer is not a bad job. Okay, what else is there? When you want to find a place to rent, where do you go? Oh, I've got um, an answer from Louisa. People that work in marketing. Yes, marketing. That's quite a Marketing and PR, very important people, right? There's no point in having a hotel or a resort if nobody even knows about it. You need to have good PR. You need to have good marketing. You need to tell everybody this is where you want to be. And by the way, that applies to an office building as well. You know, you think an office building is really boring, but the fact is if you have really good marketing, you know, really sexy name, really sexy look, that will attract tenants to your office building as well. Okay, very good answer. Anything else? Okay. So um, we've got, sorry, uh, we've got two actually coming at the same time. Simon says consultants and Mohammed says real estate. Okay, uh, well, real estate is everything that we're talking about. And consultants is a very broad um, subsector of careers, but yes, consultants, but what kind of consultants, right? So we can have consultants in marketing, in, in builders, but um, let's see what else kind of consultants we can think of. 
So I would call all of these consultants, but I'm gonna also talk about, so if I have an empty building, I need a leasing agent, okay? So these guys, they find my tenants, okay? Because I might not have a relationship to every single tenant that out there. In fact, I know I don't. And so I'm gonna to talk to my agents to find me the right type of tenants for my building. And then there's also sales agents, right? Find my buyer. When I'm done with my building and I want to sell it and make some profits, again, I need my agents to go and search for the guy who's gonna pay me the most money. And I'm not gonna know all those people because some of them are in China. Some of them are in America. I need that agent to go out and find those people. Similarly, right, I'm gonna call them investment agents find my building. So, you know, I like to think I know all the buildings in London that are available to buy, but guess what I don't, right? You, there are people who literally spend their whole working career looking for buildings that people want to buy, right? And they might say, Leslie really likes this type of office building. She likes a refurb project. Or somebody else might say, actually, I know this pension fund, they just like a really boring building that just throws up a really regular income. They, their responsibility is to find the right building for the right client, okay? So let, again, let's see, somebody's put together a very nice slide for me. And um, we also had, sorry, Leslie, we had a comment from Sahil who said engineers. Engineers, so absolutely. Engineer, so important. How could we forget? Engineers. Uh, I can't spell or I can't type one of the two. Okay. So yes, I mean, you know, we've, you know, through this list and I'm going to cover it here. I think we've covered quite a lot of the, these disciplines. Maybe we forgot about finance. Okay. Cause there are people who, and actually I have to say, I shouldn't have forgotten this because it's my speciality um, who focus a lot on the numbers. Okay. Who focus on how to find the money to get, to put together to actually build a building. Oftentimes a process doesn't even start. You don't even appoint an architect unless you have the money, okay? And, or if you have a bank, you need a bank. So these are people who you need straight on the bat. You also have, actually, this is a very interesting one, government here that I'm circling on screen. There are people in the government, right? Who have very, very important property related roles. They're the ones who determine whether you get planning permission to build. You know, in this world of developed world of ours, you can't just build anything you want on a piece of land. You have to get planning for it. You need to get permission. And actually people will tell you whether you can build a 10 story building or a 20 story building. Um, and they'll tell you whether, if you're gonna build a thousand homes, you need to make 150 of them affordable, right? So these are, they're very important jobs and they're, you know, more government related, but they're very property focused, okay? So that's, you know, a lot of people in government actually do have a government, uh, sorry, property related job. So if I go to the next slide, I'll, I'll show you that this, you know, this is kind of a line of the different disciplines and how this side is a more creative side of property, right? Being a designer and architect, being in PR and marketing. See, we got that in there. Um, agents, right? The people who are dealing with the tenants who are more salesy, let's say. Um, then we, of course, everybody needs IT and technology these days. And then this is a more technical side of the of property, right? Construction, engineers, lawyers, HR functions, finance, all right? So this is a more technical side of property. But you can see how property is a sector. It's actually really all encompassing. And there's a job for everyone in property, as far as I'm concerned, if you love property, right? So there's there's a job in property that will appeal to every skill set. Um, this slide, listen, it's a guideline. I'm, I'm not gonna say that this is black and white um, because it's not, but it's really just to give an, an indication of what kind of qualifications you need for the different types of jobs. Um, I'm going to say you need to finish high school, uh, secondary school, and ideally A-levels um, to get into property for the most part, maybe other than being in construction, all right? 
that and then thereafter, yes, is it nice to have a university degree? It will be because I think that opens the doors and allows you to um, accelerate your career and, and really reach the higher echelons of property. Um, and as you can see, you also get paid a bit more, right? If you, this is a starting salary, by the way, you could obviously make a lot more money than that if you really take your career to the end level. Um, and I think this is interesting, actually. I, I would agree with this. So I have a university degree, but I do not have a master's or doctorate, which means I, you know, to be very successful in property, you don't really need to go to graduate school. Um, to be an engineer and architect, I think to have a secondary degree, a P, you know, a PhD is helpful because that just means you're more qualified. But many of these jobs, you know, to be an investor, to be a developer, um, you know, that additional degree is not necessary, let's say. Okay. And again, please do take these numbers that are on the screen as a guideline. Um, the fact is, you know, real estate is often tied to how successful you are, right? Are you good at real estate? Do you know how to buy and sell properties well? I mean, some people make a lot of money just, you know, buying one building and getting it right. Some people can buy 20 buildings and they fail each and every time. <laughs> and, and they'll fail. Much. And in fact, Donald Trump, you know, before he became president in the United States, was a real estate developer, you know, and he's infamous for having gone bankrupt, I think twice, at least, if not three times. Um, and yet he made a lot of money as well. So he made money, he lost money, he made money. So it's, um, these numbers are just indications of where you might start out, but take this with, you know, for what it is. Um, so let me tell you a little about C4 land and what we do. And then I'll tell you a little bit about myself as well, how I fit in. So C4 land is a company I work for. Um, we're a real estate operating platform. Essentially, we, try to encompass the entire investment spectrum that we talked about earlier. So we will go and find an investor and ask them if they want to partner with us and ask them if they want to give us their money um, to develop a building or to buy a building and to reposition it. Um, and then we'll go and find some bank's money, some a bank to help us build that building or to reposition it. We'll hire an architect, we'll get the contractor, we'll build it out, we'll lease it, we'll sell it. So we take the whole investment cycle of a building from start to end. Um, so that's what we do. Um, and different people on my team have different expertise. So my expertise is, as I said to you, mainly capital finance, right? So money um, and, and making, I like to think good decisions in terms of which properties to buy. And we assess that in a number of ways. We'll get that in a moment. Um, by the way, just a little bit about my background. I probably should have started with this. So property has actually taken me all over the world. As you can tell, I'm not British. Um, I'm American. Um, I was born in the States. I graduated from university with um, a finance and accounting degrees. And then I went to New York. And actually at that point in time, I didn't know anything about property. I just kind of got lucky and landed in a property group at a bank where I fell in love with property and that property you know, experience took me, it has taken me everywhere in the world because I've worked on property transactions in Mexico, in Brazil, all over America, um, in Scandinavia, in Italy, in France, in the UK. Um, and I'm very lucky to have had that experience. Um, and really it's just, you know, I, I landed in a job in a sector that takes me everywhere. And property can do that because property is global, right? So that's, I'm very lucky. And then even within that, you know, I can tell you I've worked on schools, I've worked on hotels, I worked on lending money, on borrowing money. Um, yeah, as I said, property is all encompassing and it's really been great to me. So let me show you some of the buildings that we own. Now look at that old thing. It's not very pretty, is it? So this building is located in Farringdon. It, the address is 8 Bleeding Heart Yard. If any of you ever want to go up to Farringdon and take a look, it's actually just by the train station, which is why we like it, right? It's an ugly building, but it is a stone's throw from Farringdon. And Farringdon, if you are not aware, is going to be one of the major hubs for the new Crossrail 
train line. Crossrail as a train line is going to bring a lot of business um, and opportunity to London because people want to work near transportation hubs to make it easy for them to commute, right? Um, but if you were a tenant, you really wouldn't want to work in that building right now because firstly, it's ugly, right? You, know, you like to come to a building, you know, when you come to work and you like to be proud of the building you, you work in, but also because it's old on the inside, right? Paints falling off the ceilings, air condition, no air conditioning, um, the lifts are pretty old, there's no showers, there are no bikes. Um, and these days, if you're a tenant and you want to demand the highest rent, you need to provide great amenities to your tenants. So you need to make it look great, you need to give them the best technical spec you possibly can. You need to give them bike spaces because people like to ride bikes now. You need to give them showers because they're sweaty after the bike ride. Um, ideally, you're located near lots of amenities so people can grab a coffee on the way to work and have a drink after work or get a bite to eat with their friends, okay? So these are all the things we consider when we look at a building like that. What do we have to do to this building to make it worth more than what it is today? How much rent can we charge when we do all that work? And how much is it going to cost to get there? How much is it going to cost? And actually, will it pay off? Can we make money when we sell it, right? All of these things basically tell me whether we should buy that building, all right? So we've decided we're going to buy this building. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be a great building. I'll show you what we think it's going to look like. So we had a great architect on it. Look at that. It, that's an improvement, I think. I hope you'll agree with me from that to this. <laughs> so in this case, we went and got planning permission, again, applied to the government, to the local council of Camden, and added, asked for an extension on the top. We've completely cleaned up the exterior, changed the facade, the front of the, the building. We're completely stripping out the inside, making it look beautiful on the inside. And this is gonna be an amazing office building for our tenants when we're finished. Um, and actually, we're not even finished and we already have interest from tenants who say, who are saying to us, when you're done, we want to be in that building. And so we now hope there'll be a lot of tenants who want to be in that building and then we can start asking them how much rent they're going to pay us, right? And we'll definitely go with the one who says they'll pay the highest rent, so long as we know they're going to pay the rent, but we'll get to that in a minute. I'll give you one more example of a building that we own. This is our baby. It's called Space House. It actually was previously called CAA House, the Civil Aviation Authority um, building because um, that government entity was in there for 30 years. So the Civil Aviation Authority were in this building for 30 years. You can see it's a special building. Um, you know, the architecture is amazing. It's called Brutalist, um, this, this type of architecture. But if you went on the inside of this building, no one's done anything for 30 years because the Civil Aviation Authority, you know, they're in charge of all the airspace and airplanes and when they land and when they don't land and how many air, you know, airplanes can be up at the same time, international travel, et cetera, et cetera. They're very security conscious. So basically for 30 years, they didn't let anybody in <laughs> to do a lot of works. Um, so the lifts were falling apart. The ceilings were very old. Um, it wasn't a very nice place to be on the inside, but the outside has so much potential, right? Um, so what do we need to add to it to improve it? Well, you know, again, we have to upgrade all the mechanical um, and engineering for the buildings. We wanted to add lots of bike spaces, showers, lockers. Those are standard these days. And in fact, what we also decided that we could do, and we got planning permission for it, is that, do you see this tower here? We're actually adding two floors. So we're gonna jack this crown up and put two floors in, into that tower. So we're actually creating more space that we can let to tenants, which means it's gonna be more valuable when we sell it, right? So if you can add more space to your building, it's kind of like adding an extension to your house. If your house is, let's say a thousand square feet, but you can get an extension you know, for either you know, a conservatory or a shed, or you push out the back of your house for a kitchen, I'm sure you've had friends who've done that, guess what? You've increased the value of your house because you've made it bigger. 
we do the same thing, right? So we take a building like that and say, wow, that's an amazing building. We bet there'll be lots of tenants who want to sit in that tower and have, a, have office space. What if we can get permission to make it even taller? So we've done that. We've got permission to build it a little bit taller um, and, and to infill some of the space. We've also created an amazing basement for amenity space. I'll show you some pictures. So this is what it's gonna look like when it's finished. Nice and clean. These windows will be all brand new, beautiful. And this is, this is what it really, this is the amazing space. I would love to work in an office that looks like this. So when you tell a tenant, I want you to pay 90 pounds a square foot per year, if you want to be in this building, they might just say yes, because that's amazing space for them to have their employees in. And especially now after COVID, when a lot of people are saying, I can work at home, but the employers are saying, you know what, I really want them to come to the office because it's nice to see people and it's nice to work as a team. They're only gonna get their team into the office if they have nice, if they have a nice place to work in. And so the quality of workspace is actually more important than ever. Um, so we think this is nice quality office space. And this is a base, so this is some terrace space on the, on the top. And this is gonna be, well, this is ideas for our basement. We have a double high tech basement where we could do theater events, we can do fashion events. Um, so this is a really special building. I encourage, this is actually on Kingsway, um, just off Covent Garden. So if you're ever in that neighborhood, go take a look at it. Again, it's called, C you might find it on your Google Maps as CAA House, or you can call it Space House, but find it. You'll, you'll be amazed. You probably walked by it a thousand times. You don't know how amazing it is. Um, okay, how am I doing on time? Wow, I know how to talk. All right, let's talk more about property values. Um, and again, this is what I, I want you guys to help me answer these questions because I know you know these answers. What are the things that impact property value? And think about some of the things that I've said earlier already about why I like the buildings that we've bought. Um, and tell me if you can give me some answers. Location. Location, I love it. Do you know, I've done this talk a couple times and everybody says location first and you're so right. Location, 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 right? It's so important. There's even a TV show called Location, Location, Location. Location is so important. What's important about location? Somebody tell me why is location important? Um, we've had a few typed in. I don't know if you can see that. But expansions, says Sorry? Lisa. Expansions. I'm not sure. Oh, expansions. Ability to extend. Sure. Yes, of course. Ability and then. And to extend. Sure. And then Simon has said proximity to transportation. Yes. Someone else has put transportation. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, okay, okay. Stop. Yes. So. Location, location, location is proximity, yeah. How close to infrastructure, okay? So, transportation, absolutely 100%, right? If you're in the city and you have your employees coming in from out of town, you don't want them to show up at King's Cross or Farringdon and then have to walk another 20 minutes. Guess what, your, your employees are not gonna be that happy. They might not even take the job if they know that they have to travel another 20 minutes to get to their desk, right? So being a stone's throw to easy transport is really important. What else is important about location? Or anything else, sorry, what else do you have on there? I have, um, Mohammed has put inflation. So I don't know, inflation. Mohammed, did you wanna expand on what you mean by that? Oh, I can, I can, I can guess. Mohammed, do you want to give me an answer? Or shall I take a guess? I'm going to say I'm going to talk about macroeconomic factors. And an example: inflation. Okay. I'm going to add some other ones: interest rates. Uh, yeah, why not? I'll just stop there. So you're right, Mohammed. So inflation, which is basically, if you, if you haven't studied it, is the concept of whether the cost of goods goes up or indeed can go down. In that case, it's deflation. When things go up though, everything usually goes up together. So 
for instance, you don't really want to be building a property when you think the market's going to crash. Okay. If you think the market's gone up, 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 and it's at the top, it's not a really good time to be buying a building because you're probably paying too much for it. You're going to spend too much for the cost of the materials because of inflation. You're going to pay too much for the construct for the builder because of inflation and because they have so much work, they can say no to you. Um, and then when the market tips, you're stuck with the building you pay too much for. So you do want to get your cycle, right? Cyclical timing, let's call that as well. Timing, inflation, interest rates, that's how much you have to pay your bank to borrow money. Okay, what else? So Simon has put people's view on future property value, which ties in, I guess, with yep. that. And, her and herding effect. Herding effect? Mm, I don't know what that means. I don't either. Simon, do you okay. want to shout well, out? Well, while we're waiting for Simon to either shout out or say, Sumaya has put condition yes. as a factor. Yes. Absolutely. Physical condition of the building. Let's talk about the building itself, right? Physical condition of the building, right? Is it old? Is it new? Does it need new lifts? Does it have air conditioning? Right? All this stuff. If you buy a brand new building, right, that has everything all done, guess what? You're going to pay a lot more money for it. You probably can't make as much money for it on it, right? Because you, you're already buying a building that's been done up. But there are a lot of investors, by the way, who say, I don't want the trouble or the risk of building a building from scratch or refurbishing a building. I want to buy something that somebody else has done already, and I'll pay more for that. I just want to collect the rent. That's absolutely fine. I'm happy to sell to that guy. I want to build a building, make it amazing, and I want to sell top dollar or top pound to that investor. That's exact. So that's what I'm... But for me, an old building, if it's in a great location and has expansion development opportunity, that's the perfect formula for me, okay? What else is we have We have another. Oh, sorry, Leslie. Yeah, no, go ahead, go ahead. Here, shout out. Um, so Irvi has said the surroundings. Yeah. So that ties in with location. Location, it's so important, guys, right? So surroundings and amenities. So I touched upon this earlier, right? When you have people working in a building, if it's in the middle of nowhere, right? Let's, you know, you could build, you could buy a really cheap piece of land on a farm and you can build an office building. But you know what? No one's really gonna wanna work there. Why? Because there's nothing to do there. And you're gonna have to drive to get there. And, you know, if it might be really cheap to buy that building there or to rent that building there, but you're never gonna be able to hire anybody to work there because where are they gonna eat? Where are they gonna go after work? Where are they going to go? There's no cinema nearby, right? So I'm gonna say F and B, so that's food and beverage, okay? So where can you get your coffee on the way to work? Where can you get your sandwich if you, if you didn't bring your own? Um, leisure, right? So after work, do you wanna go you know, have a drink with a friend? Do you want to go to a pub? Do you want to go to the cinema together? Right? These are all really important things, right? People, you know, especially for you guys, right? Your first job, you know, I have a husband and kids to go home to and cook dinner for. But when you're, when, I mean, I remember being 24 and 25, after work, bring on the party, you know, especially on a Thursday or Friday night, I was having fun. Being in New York was a great place to be, right? So these are important things. And uh, we've got a few more comments, actually, Leslie. Shall I read them out? Yeah, please. Tahira has said crime rates. Okay. And Ali has said the neighborhood, which sort of ties in with that as well. Mm -hmm. And Simon has come back to proximity to energy facilities, closeness to, closeness to schools as well. So yeah, that also ties in. Yeah. Okay, so security and neighborhood, I'm gonna say very important. Um, it is really important. And again, that's another reason why people tend, you know, when you look at office buildings, and, and good residential developments, they tend to be in places where there's good security, right? And they tend to be in center of city where there's a lot of people around and lots of police around, et cetera. It's important. Um, nobody wants to build, you know, 
Now, that being said, you could take a view as a developer, and many people do, to say, you know what, this is a little bit of a dodgy area right now, but guess what, it's right next to King's Cross, or it's right next to Shortage, and I think this area is going to come up in the next five years. Now, that's taking a bet on an area that's going to gentrify, that's going to come up, and that things are going to get better because growth is going that way, and that will happen, right? So actually, um, Stratford, you know, is an area which, you know, 20, 30 years ago wasn't the best place to live. Now it's actually pretty expensive because guess what? They had the Olympics there, right? They had the Olympics there. They built loads of housing. They have the amazing Westfield Shopping Center. That area has completely come up and the developers who took a chance on that, they made out very, very well. Okay. Um, what's the other one? Security neighborhood, Simon Hill. Um well, Simon said proximity to energy facilities. Oh, yeah, and, and, and education. Okay, yeah, okay. So I'm, so uh, utilities, okay, utilities, ex utility accessibility, um, and also education. Okay, so proximity, proximity. I'm going to say education proximity, particularly important for residential, okay? If you, oh geez, sorry. If you're buying a house and you plan on having a family, being in a good school district, really important, right? So if you're a residential investor, you either have to be close to school or you better build one. And by the way, that happens. So developers, when they get their planning permission from the local council, sometimes they promise them and say, listen, I'm gonna build new schools for you. That, and, and that's part of the package and the commitment they make. Utility accessibility, I think is a really interesting one. Power is really important today. Power, broadband. Because, you know, everybody's on the net these days, right? And you need good power supply and broadband capability. Um, and in fact, uh, I'll tell you right now, you know, we're on a building right now. It's in middle Soho. It's actually on Shaftesbury Avenue, um, right across from Chinatown. It's a great building, but you know what? We might have to bring in more power to the building because the power that's there right now may not be enough. And that's gonna cost us something that we didn't actually anticipate. Um, so it is important. Broadband, particularly important, you know, there are, uh, you know, another subsector, which actually wasn't on our list called data centers. You know, these data centers, all they do is store data and information there's hardly anybody working in it. It's basically just a big box with lots of servers on the inside. But the one thing that data centers must be close to is broadband, right? And power supply. They need maximum power supply and broadband capacity. Um, and people like Google and Apple, you know, they want their data centers to be very close to power and broadband supply. So that's a really good answer. Um, let's keep going, all right? Because we could talk about this forever. But these are, you know, Absolutely right in all of these answers. I, I love the fact that you guys can think about these things. And think and again, remember, thinking about this, these are things that I think about for my 100 million pound building. Again, same things that you think about when you're talking about your 100,000 pound flat, right? What are, what, you know, where is it? Can I get to my supermarket, to my grocery store? Can I get to the train, get to work easily? Is it, do I feel safe? Is it near the schools? You know, does it have good Wi-Fi connectivity? Am I on Virgin or am I on Sky, right? These are things that people think about when they talk about their homes. And these are the same things I think about when I talk about a big commercial building, all right? So next one. I love this question because I know you guys always end up with the right answers. And it's, it's always really impressive to me how you guys know this stuff. So COVID has been a real tough time for a lot of people, right? Um, but as I said, some people have done amazingly well out of COVID and some people have done really, really badly. Um, now, if I'm, well, why don't we, let's start there. Who can, uh, we, we talked about one or two of them already. So a winner from COVID are Amazon, right? They've done extremely well. Amazon and online retailers. We couldn't get to the shops, right? Which meant that we were ordering online. So anybody who could provide things via the internet, they did extremely well. But conversely, who's the loser of that? Somebody tell me. 
You can shout out the answers if no. you like. Just shout it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've got Simon has said retailers. Yeah. And I, I guess that you're talking about this sort or of high street. Oh. Yep. High street, physical. Thanks for that. Any other ideas? Ah, Louisa has said firms that only have physical sites. Yep. Physical um, yeah, so Sahil has, has suggested one, such as Primark. And I think they are, are one of the retailers who did not have any online presence, did they? Yeah, exactly. So anybody who only had physical shops, they've really suffered. Um, what else has, who, what's, who is a winner, who is a loser? Just name me a few. Oh, I've got, I'm sorry, I've got hotels, as, yeah. I guess, as a loser, and Zoom. Um, as big winner, big winner, winner completely. That's Sumeya. And then we've got Irvi has said airlines. And so I'm guessing that's a loser. Yeah, airlines are losers. Winners, Zoom, Teams. They've Thank you for that, guys. Any any others? Winners or losers? What I'm do doing guessing here. Tell me, I want you guys to tell me what do you what do you guys do at home when you guys are uh, when you guys are. Oh, sorry, that's my uh, <laughs> my um, my timer telling me I'm I'm speaking too long. So, what have you guys been doing at home when you've been locked up and not on doing your distance learning? Okay, we've got an answer from Samaya who said. Um, oh, well, Netflix is the answer to that question, but um, she's put, I, I guess, like the cleaning companies that um, have are losers, aren't they? Because people aren't in their premises. Ooh, interesting. Well, now that's... Or are they, or are, they, or are you... They could be because, because, though, right? Because now, okay, let's talk about it. So firstly, Netflix, Prime. Uh, we've got online games, uh, art yes, and craft. Very much gaming. I was, I was aiming. So... Netflix, Prime, Disney Plus, right? These guys have made out so well, right? Because we're at home. We have nothing to do. Like I have watched every single movie on Netflix and Prime and every time they bring out another bad movie, I watch it. Guess why? Because I'm still at home and I can't go to the cinema yet, right? So these guys have done extremely well. Um, what were we talking about? Cleaners, cleaners. Well, you know what? You could be a loser, probably a loser during the worst of COVID, but I'm going to generally put them in a winner. So I'm gonna, let's call specialist cleaners because cleaning firms, because now, you know, everybody's so focused on cleanliness. There are a bunch of people now who are not just cleaning offices and, and you know, but there's actually people who are their whole job is actually changing the space and the layout of offices, right? Distancing yeah. people and desks. There's also people who are coming up with new technologies using lasers to kill germs. Um, these are almost new cleaning sectors and new kind of office managerial type um, skill sets that people are paying for, all right? So yes, for a while they were losers, but I'm gonna say that right now they're, I would call the specialists winners. Uh, what else? So we've got Ali said games, Louise said arts and crafts, and I was reading actually that puzzles, jigsaw puzzles, have, have had a revival, but it's all of those things that people can do at home, Ooh. which is amazing. Yeah. And I mean, then um, yeah. and then Sahil has said electrical companies, because obviously we're all using a lot more power. Yeah. yeah. Um, Tahira said, um, Winners, social media such as TikTok, but also to hear uh, you've put BC of COVID. Um, what does that mean? Do you mean? I'm not sure. Um, uh, Simon it's, said tourism industry, which is cool. That's definitely a loser, right? So yeah. let's put that with hotels. What, what else? Actually, can, let's go back to losers for a moment. So high street and physical shops, where have we been eating? We've been eating at home. So losers right don't forget the poor restaurants who have really suffered although right now people are starting to eat out with a vengeance right as soon as people are eating out in every single pavement um cafe that possibly they can find um because people are so keen to get out again and see friends and family wow and and we've got so ali has said uber eats and simon has said just eat so the takeaway yeah, those are delivery. Absolutely. So Uber Eats just... Bronwyn, please Uber. feel free to help out with this. <laughs> no, it's okay. Yeah. Sorry? 
Okay, I've got, so these are all, okay, so this is interesting. So hang on, let me make this smaller because we're, we're taking up so much of the space. Okay, now we can get more. So I'll tell you another winner just so because, because people are not as comfortable using public transport anymore, bicycles, right? Of course. Bicycles, ooh, you know, um, people who sell, you know, physical fitness kits for home, but the loser conversely is gyms, right? Yeah. So health clubs, gyms. Right. Who knows whether people are really going to be happy going back to gyms? I mean, people are going back to my gym, but slowly. So, you know, if you think about it, gym, everybody touches the same things. Will everybody be, well, anybody be completely comfortable going back? Who knows? It's a real, I mean, it's a question. I don't have the answer to that, but they were definitely a loser during COVID. So if I'm a landlord, okay, and if you are an owner of a property, whom do you want as your tenant? You want these guys, these winners, okay, to be your tenant. Because these guys, their businesses are growing. They will pay your rent, okay? And when you talk about, and actually we didn't talk about rent as a valuation, uh, you know, how, how, what determines valuation of a rent? Well, guess what? How much do they pay, right? So gosh, I can't believe we didn't get to the money part of it. How much rent can you get? right? You know, and credit worthiness of your tenant. So i.e. So this is the money side of, you know, property value. How much rent can you get on a building or how much rent is contracted in your building? And the credit worthiness of your tenant, is your tenant actually going to pay? You know, so you could have a guy come along. Let's, let's go back to here. You could have a gym, right, come along and they could say, Leslie, I'm going to pay you a hundred pounds a square foot to be in your building. And I'm going to say, well, you know what? You haven't done so well these last two years and you don't have any money behind you. You've really suffered through COVID. Your bank's called in bankruptcy. You know, how are you going to pay my rent? I don't care if you're going to pay me a hundred pounds a square foot. And there'll be another guy, there'll be Netflix saying, Leslie, you've built an amazing building and I'll pay you 90 pounds a square foot. Who do you think I'm going to take? The gym will pay me 100 pounds a square foot or Netflix will pay me 90 pounds a square foot. I might even let Netflix go in for 80 pounds a square foot because they're such a great tenant. And when you sell that building, the person who's going to buy it is going to say, ah, Netflix, that's a tenant who's going to keep on paying their rent. I'm going to pay more for that building because I know they're going to keep paying their rent. Okay, these, and again, these are the things I think about on a commercial building, same thing applies to, you know, the individual 100,000 pound flat. So I'm sure you guys know people, right, who might own, um, you know, in addition to the flat they own, they might own one flat that they rent out to people. But how do they decide who to rent it out to? They rent, they decide by saying, how much rent can they pay? Do they have a job? And meaning, can they pay their rent? And actually, how much do they make? Do they make more than what the rent is per month? And do they still have enough money to feed the kids and to you know, buy clothes and to pay the bills? Or are they actually paying rent they can't afford? Right, that's not a good tenant for me, right? A tenant who can't afford to pay their rent is a bad tenant because they're just not, they're gonna stop paying after a while, right? So these are the same decisions I make on a big building as you would on that one little flat that you might own as an investment, all right? So listen, I've talked a lot. I could keep talking. Um, We've just had a couple more um, suggestions, actually, Liz. Yeah, I'll take them. I'll take them. So uh, cab companies, Louisa says. Oh yeah, they they suffered for a while, didn't they? Yeah. So let's say uh, taxis. Yeah, I feel bad for the black truck drivers, actually. Yeah, and then uh, Simon has said government. So yeah. Or loser. <laughs> well, I, I asked for losers. And Sumeya has said small businesses, which I think the losers can possibly, if they were not able to be agile enough to, to sort of switch it around. So yeah. yeah some, some small businesses have done really well though, right? So some small businesses, if they've been smart, they've switched online quickly. Um, and I will say this, I think, you know, the human race 
are, we're amazing people, really, all of us. You know, we, ha we have survived COVID and there are a lot of small businesses who might have gone bankrupt, but they'll reinvent themselves, right? And they'll be back and they'll come out with something different. In fact, I'm gonna say this with certainty, quite a lot of restaurants that were shut down during COVID, they've, you know, those guys, because, you know, it was COVID that shut them down, they, uh, uh, there are restaurateurs who are coming back now, you know, with a different name, with a different unit, with a different rent, um, and they will, they will succeed the next time around. Um, and I, I like seeing that. It's a great thing to see. All right. So I hope that was helpful. I really wanted to give you a sense of the things that we think about as property investors. I also wanted to give you guys a sense of all the different aspects of property um, and how you, if you continue your interest in property, might have a role to play. And you can see all the different roles that you might have. You can be behind the building in creating it. You could be involved in the leasing of it, right? These are important decisions we just talked about with these winners, these losers. Actually, I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, you could be on the sales side, you can be on the buy side. You could be providing the money to it, right? So there's something for everyone in property and I, I do love it about, you know, that's what I like. And again, we all see it around us every day. We're in it all the time. Um, so it is, it's a lot of common sense actually. Yeah, you can make it very complicated and sometimes that's how my life goes. But I love the fact that it fundamentally breaks down to the same principles that we, we use in our everyday lives.